Today we are in the for loops chapter of Learn to Code and we're working on the sixth activity called Gem Farm. Okay, Gem Farm is a challenge and the instructions say to decompose this problem into multiple patterns and uh, develop functions and loops that will uh, handle all those uh, patterns. Okay, so what we've got here is our end goal, of course, is to clean up all the gems and all the switches. There are six gems and six switches we need to get. Um, if we look at this, uh, the six gems are all on the right-hand side of byte, and the six switches are all on the left-hand side of byte. So it might make sense to maybe start off thinking about this in terms of, you know, let's clean up all the switches first toggle all the switches on and then let's handle um, collecting all the gems that would be a reasonable thing to uh, maybe start thinking down that path and if that doesn't work out we'll think of some other way to do this maybe uh, try it by row maybe we'll say well let's try cleaning up the row that bites on right now all the switches and all the gems and then we'll move up to the next row and clean up all the switches and all the gems on that row and so on. So um, it's always okay to think to think of one possible way to solve it and then if you're not liking the way that's going switch over to the other method. All right so we said we're going to try to maybe tackle the uh, toggling the switches first. So again let's break that sub problem down into even more sub problems and that is to say here if we want to tackle the switches it looks like there are two switches on each row. So maybe one, um, one plan might be, let's get the two switches next to byte, then let's move up a row and get the two switches to byte's left, and then let's move up a row and get the two switches to byte's left. Okay, that certainly seems reasonable. Um, now to do that, we're going to maybe develop a function here that uh, it looks like something we do over and over and over again is get two switches in a row. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and start by developing that function. Okay, and let's not worry about which way byte is facing right now. Let's just assume that we're facing the row of two switches that we want to toggle and uh, what would we do to uh, handle that. So uh, funk uh, toggle to switches okay and uh, we're going to assume that we're facing those switches so we don't have to turn or anything at the beginning now we want to uh, of course move forward onto a switch toggle it and then move forward onto the next switch and toggle it but since those two things are you know the same let's not write them all out let's write them in a for loop uh, so uh, something that will do two things at a time so for i in one dot 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 two we're going to handle uh, these two switches that will be directly in front of us uh, the two things we want to do is move forward and toggle the switch Okay. Now, we'll, we, that will get us uh, that will get us two switches toggled, but then we need to turn around and come back to where we are. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say turn around and then come back to where we are. And again, um, that's something that probably can go in another for loop because we're going to need to do something some number of times. So for i in one dot 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 two. All we need to do now after we've turned around is move forward to. So we'll put that in our for loop like that. Okay. Uh, now our turnaround uh, function is giving us an error because it doesn't exist. So let's go ahead and write that up above here. Funk turnaround. And that'll just be a turn right and a turn right. Okay. Uh, let's test this out now. Uh, 
I don't need to clean up all all the uh, all the switches right now. Let's just test one of these out. So in order for this to run okay, Byte's going to need to be facing the row of switches we want him to handle. So all we need to do is say turn left in our main program, and then call our abstract idea toggle to switches, toggle to switches. Okay, that's the function we just wrote up here that goes and uh, collects two, or goes and toggles two switches and then comes back. So let's try that. Okay, he turns left. Now he's handling the toggle to switches function. Gets them both toggled. He turns around and he moves back. Good. Okay, so that did what we want. Uh, that definitely did what we want. Now, uh, if we want to go move up and get these next two switches, that's fine. We can do that. Um, but now I'm starting to rethink our original strategy because look at this one. Byte comes back from handling these two switches. He's already facing these two gems. So maybe it makes sense to go the second route, what we talked about at the beginning. The second route is where we go ahead and get to toggle two switches and then collect the two gems that are on the same row um, and then go and do the same thing on, uh, on another row. So uh, again, not a problem to rethink what you're doing. And uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So what would we need to do in order to collect these two gems in front of us? Well, I think this is going to be similar to our toggle two switches function here. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this, and let's make another one. I'm going to paste this in here, and we'll see if this saves us any time. So we've got toggle two switches, and instead of toggle, this will be collect to collect two gems. Okay, collect two gems. And the idea is the same. We don't want to worry right now about if we're facing this, but we're going to assume at the beginning of this function call that we're facing the, the row of two gems. And then we've got a for loop that says we can move forward. And instead of toggle switch here, let's collect gems along the way. Move forward, collect gem. Move forward, collect gem. Then turn around. Then come all the way back with two move forwards. Okay, so if we were to maybe clean up a whole row, now cleaning up a whole row, if we're facing switches, would be just to toggle two switches and then collect two gems. Okay, let's try this out. See if this works. We're going to turn left and toggle two switches. Then when we come out of here, we're going to keep facing the way we are, and we're going to collect two gems. All right. That's great. Oh, we've cleaned up a whole row, right? We could even, we could if we want to, combine these two functions up into, uh, into an abstract idea of cleaning up a row. In fact, let's just go ahead and do that. Okay, so func clean one row of switches and gems. Okay, and all we want to do with that is go ahead and toggle two switches, and then when we come out of there, we're going to collect two gems. Okay, all right, now we can replace these two things with a clean one row of switches and gems. Okay, So our main program now, which will just do exactly what we did before, is clean one, is turn left and then clean up a row. Okay, Now when we're done cleaning up a row, look at this, we're facing to the left here. And our next goal will be to come up here and clean up this second row. The second row. So in order to do that, well, that's not very tricky at all. We just need to do a turn right, turn right, move forward, and then turn left again. 
Now after we turn left, we're facing the second row of switches, so we can just call our abstract idea cleaning one row of switches and gems. And when we're done with that, now when we're done with that, we want to turn right again, move forward one, and turn left again so that we're facing the next row of switches again. But now you can see we're sort of repeating this idea of turn left, clean the row, turn right, move forward. Turn left, clean the row, turn right, move forward. So really, this whole sequence of things, the sequence of four commands from turn left, clean right, clean row, turn right, move forward, uh, are going to need to be repeated three times because there are three rows we need to get to and clean. So let's just go ahead and uh, put that in a loop, right? So for i in the uh, series 1 to the sequence 1 to 3, we will grab this and include those four commands in that for loop. And then we'll get rid of these down here. Okay, so those are all in a for loop, and in fact, that's the only thing in our main program is this for loop with uh, that goes from one to three with these four commands in it. So uh, let's go ahead and try this. I'll run it quickly, so we'll run faster to step through this code. So he's cleaning up row one, turned left and cleaned up row one. And then we'll come back, turn right, move forward, turn left while we clean up the second row. And turn left and clean up the third row. Okay, good. Um, nice. So that's great. Um, that was a nice, easy way to solve uh, this problem made a lot of sense. We've got a nice, short, clear, clear uh, main program here with just the abstract ideas in here, which basically says we want to clean up three rows, and the way we're doing this is to uh, face ourselves towards a row, go ahead and clean up the row, and then these two commands here basically move us up to the next row and get us ready for that next row. All right? Now, uh, a couple things here. What if your, uh, you know, it's, it's, we did a couple things extra at the end. After we cleaned the row, in this third row, we didn't really need to turn right and move forward. That's somewhat of a little bit of a waste of time there, because um, it's not actually, we're not getting ready for another row and it's not doing any cleaning. So, what if that really bothered you? It doesn't bother me, but if it really bothers you, you could do one thing here. You could say, well, uh, let's change this a little bit so that we only run this actually two times through the whole sequence of things. Okay, and then once we run that through two times, the only thing we have left to do to clean up the last row is to turn left and to clean rows and switches like clean one row of switches like that, and we don't need to do the turn right and move forward the last time there. So just to be sure this works and we leave off that last turn right and move forward, I'll run this through quickly one more time. Okay, he's finishing up the last clean one row of switches and gems, and notice when he comes back here, he's just going to stop. He's not going to do the last turn right and move forward. Okay, so just a little detail. If you ever run across a, uh, a situation where you don't want to do those last two things, well, just run it one extra, run your loop one one time less, and put the first part of the the uh, of the procedures in the uh, at the end, and don't and leave off the last parts and it'll take care of that so okay now before you go here uh, just uh, ideas on what you could try if you want some extra practice well if you want some extra practice you could go ahead and do the 
our original plan, which was to clean up the switches first and then clean up the gems second. Okay, that would be some good practice. And there's other ways to solve this problem as well. But when you clean up the switches, if you try it so that you're going to clean up the switches first and the gems second, what I suggest is to walk along cleaning up the switches. And then as you turn around, you can clean up the gems on your way back toward the starting block. Okay, that might be a good strategy for uh, taking care of that. But you're going to need both of these, to, or at least two functions very similar to this, toggle two switches and collect two gems. So that's not wasted time. If you decide to tackle it that way, uh, you're going to use similar functions to these. Okay, good luck with that, and we'll see you next time.